In a horrific terror attack yesterday, three people were killed and three others wounded. The U.S. has said that they're going to open an investigation into the death of the Al Jazeera journalist Shireen Abu Akleh back in May. And Benjamin Netanyahu is still unable to form a coalition because of disputes over different ministerial positions. I'm Justin, and this is The Israel Guys. Hello and welcome to The Israel Guys, where we believe that in a world of Jew hatred and anti-Israel propaganda, you should have a direct connection to the land and people of Israel. Make sure to like and subscribe. Also hit the notification bell so you never miss any of the episodes of The Israel Guys. We're uh, putting out three videos a week, also some short form content. And go follow us on our social media pages as well, on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all those. We'd love to interact with you and to get um, more traction. Uh, also, thanks to Blessed by Israel for sponsoring this video. So yesterday, there was a horrible, horrible terrorist attack in Ariel. Ariel is just about 30 minutes from here, where we are on the Mount of Blessings. So it's close to home for us. But unfortunately, there were three people that were killed, and uh, three others are still wounded in critical condition. So a terrorist uh, at the entrance to Ariel at the industrial zone. He stabbed uh, several people, and then he went down to the gas station and stabbed more people. Um, and according to an Army spokesperson, the terrorist fled the scene, but was thankfully located by the IDF uh, forces on the uh, Route 5 near the town of Pedowell, and he was shot and neutralized. While attempting to evade authorities, the terrorist caused an accident on Route 5, which involved eight cars um, there. On the highway, the spokesperson said, quote, a terrorist arrived at the entrance gate of the Ariel Industrial Zone and stabbed civilians in the area. Later on, the terrorist arrived at a nearby gas station and stabbed additional additional civilians. The terrorist fled the gas station by driving a stolen vehicle at Route 5, committed an intended car accident, and rammed an additional civilian. So he caused uh, an accident, as I said before, and it involved Eight cars, so this is a brutal attack. He was just trying to kill as many Jews as he could before being taken out. Media outlets in the Palestinian Authority identified the terrorist as a 19-year-old resident of the town of Hares, which is near Ariel. Uh, we won't say his name. We do not like to give credit to terrorists. He's reportedly aligned with the Fatah terrorist organization. So um, paramedics, along with uh, Mogan David Adom and United Hatzalel Hatzalah personnel, they treated the victims at the scene, uh, and then they evacuated them to uh, the Bellinson Medical Center in Petatikva. Uh, Prime Minister Yair Lapid responded to this attack. He said, quote, Israeli citizens awoke to a painful and difficult morning. A despicable terrorist carried out a despicable terrorist attack in Ariel. On behalf of the Israeli government and the state of Israel, I send my condolences to the families of the murderer, of the murdered and wish a speedy recovery to the wounded. Uh, so the first victim who succumbed to his wounds, who died um, from this horrific attack, he was a father of six named Tamir Abichai. He was a resident of Kiryat Netafim. Uh, he, for those who knew him personally, they said he was super kind and smiling and generous. Uh, Samaria Regional Council head, uh, Yossi Dagan, he knew Abichai personally. He said, quote, this is a difficult moment for us all, three murdered and three injured. We embrace the family in the town of Kiryat Netafim at this difficult hour. The second two victims who uh, died from these wounds, they were uh, Michael Ledigan. He made Aliyah five years ago, and he was a father of two. Also, Moti Ashkenazi, who is a father of three and grandfather of two from the town of Yavne. And what is really sickening about this whole thing is later on in the day, it shows you how dark this uh, the culture is here, the Muslim culture, just promoting death, celebrating death. Later on in the day, after this attack, there were Palestinians in Gaza seen handing out candy in the streets in celebration of three Jews being murdered, three wounded, a step closer for them from their ultimate goal of driving the Jews out of the land of Israel and from pushing them into the sea wiping the whole Jewish people off the face of the map. Also, the IDF responded to the attack. Uh, last night, the IDF, along with Israel's security agencies, worked on mapping out the terrorist's home 
to demolish it. That's how they respond. They're going to respond with strength, not show a weak face. They're going to, that's what the terrorists get. The, the family will be kicked out and his home demolished. They need to, they need, the IDF needs to show a strong face and to respond. This is how you respond to terrorist attacks. Guys, as crazy as this may sound, this is bizarre, absolutely ridiculous. The U.S. has decided to launch an investigation into the death of Shireen Abu Akleh. So the U.S. government has informed the Israeli government that the FBI has opened an investigation into the death of Shireen Abu Akleh. Those of you who don't know, she was the Al Jazeera journalist who was shot and killed while covering a firefight between Arab soldiers and Arab terrorists in Janine back in May. Uh, so in the weeks preceding this operation, the IDF went into Janine. Uh, when she was killed, the IDF went into Janine to take out terrorists because in the weeks preceding the operation, there were 19 terror attacks uh, in the area around here, and 11 of those terrorists came from the area of Janine where the IDF were operating. So this is the reason that the IDF was going into Janine to take out terrorists because 11 of those terrorists came from that town. So the IDF went in and um, it was counterterrorism and the uh, Arab terrorist gunmen, they opened fire on them. They were hurling explosives at them. Also, they were shooting, there's videos of the Palestinian gunmen shooting crazy. They did wild and indiscriminate gunfire towards IDF soldiers at the time, also in the area in which Shireen Abu Akleh was killed. Um, since the incident, the IDF they were they thoroughly reviewed the circumstances of her death. They were super transparent throughout the whole thing. They wanted to and to conduct an investigation in the beginning, right after the attack. But the Palestinian Authority did not want to cooperate. They they wouldn't even hand over the bullet that uh, killed her. So the IDF had a really hard time doing investigations. Finally, um, in cooperation with the U.S., the, Israel was able to have the bullet, and they were they did an investigations. They presented their final investigations uh, in September, although they were doing it before. The investigative team concluded that while there was a high possibility that Abu Akleh was accidentally struck by a bullet fired by an IDF soldier, see, they're willing to take responsibility. If there was them, the IDF are willing to take responsibility, whereas the Palestinian Authority, they've continually blamed Israel. Um, they've also... Uh, also, the rest of the world basically blamed Israel. The news media, CNN, Al Jazeera, they blamed Israel. Israel, also the UN, has blamed Israel for this, even with zero evidence that it was an IDF soldier. It's just as possible that it was from a Palestinian gunman. So they said, while there's a high possibility, possibility that Abu Akleh was accidentally struck by a bullet fired by an IDF soldier, it was not possible to determine with any certainty that that is what occurred. In addition, the bullet which killed her proved to be too damaged to determine which gun it had been fired from, so they couldn't tell because it was too damaged. Um... All this was done under the supervision of professional representatives, not only from the U.S. security coordinator, but also um, from the Palestinian Authority as well. So they concluded that it was impossible to tell at this point. Also, the U.S. put out a statement after the ballistic examination. Um, they said, quote, after an extremely detailed forensic analysis, independent third-party examiners, as part of a process overseen by the U.S. security coordinator, could not reach a definitive Conclusion regarding the origin of the bullet that killed Palestinian-American journalist Shireen Abu Akleh. Ballistic experts determined the bullet was badly damaged, which prevented a clear conclusion. So the State Department said it was impossible to tell. They could not uh, tell a clear conclusion at this point. So what changed? Suddenly they, they want the FBI to open an investigation into this uh, just to see who um, did it. Because they want to blame Israel, they... The, the U.S. administration, the Biden administration right now, they're very anti-Israel. And this is also anti-Semitic attack against Israel. They want to prove that it was Israel that killed her um, just, just because of they want to be anti-Israel. So recently, um, several Democrats expressed dissatisfaction with the IDF's investigation. They put pressure on the State Department uh, Senators Chris Van Hollen and Patrick Leahy. They attempted to pass motions requiring the State Department to conduct its own investigations into the incident. Uh, Defense Minister Benny Gantz thankfully called this out, um, as well as several other Israeli officials. He called the Biden administration's decision to launch its own investigation a mistake. He said, quote, 
The IDF has conducted a professional, independent investigation, which was presented to American officials with whom the case details were shared. I have delivered a message to U.S. representatives that we stand by the IDF soldiers and that we will not cooperate with an internal, external investigation. Prime Minister Yair Lapid also came out against the decision. He said, quote, Our soldiers will not be investigated by the FBI or by any other foreign country or entity, however friendly it may be. We will not abandon our soldiers to foreign investigations. We have con conveyed our strong protest to the United States. He's absolutely right. The U.S. has no right to be digging its nose into what the IDF is doing, and Prime Minister Yair Lapid is right, and not to abandon their soldiers to foreign investigations. Also, Danny Danone, he, uh, Israel's former ambassador to the UN, and he's now going to be in the next Knesset as part of the Likud, um, he called the decision by the U.S. ridiculous. This is uh, unacceptable. No one, no one, including our friend from the U.S., will investigate our soldiers, our officers, we will support them. Texas Senator Ted Cruz also called this out. He said, quote, Joe Biden and his administration view Israel and Prime Minister-elect Benjamin Netanyahu as political enemies, and so they're responding to them the way they respond to all their political enemies, by unleashing the FBI. Our Israeli allies have, since the very beginning, cooperated closely with the United States in investigating this incident, and the State Department and Defense Departments had already drawn their conclusions. They had. They released a statement. They said it was impossible to tell. But now they want to open a whole new investigation from the, with the FBI to tell who killed her. Hopefully with all this pressure um, from different Israeli officials, also from Ted Cruz, hopefully other people will speak up. Hopefully with all this pressure, the U.S. will back down and will not do this. And hopefully the Israel will not cave in to their demands as well. I'm going to talk a little bit about what's going on the, in the Israeli government. But first, let me tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Blessed by Israel. They're not just sponsors for us. They are great friends of ours. Basically, what they do is they take products from small family businesses here in Judea and Samaria, and they sell them. They have a website where they sell the products from uh, specifically Judea and Samaria. We call it the heartland, the biblical heartland of Israel. The world, uh, the whole world, and the BDS movement boycott, divestment, and sanctions. They want to call it the West Bank. They want to say that Israel does not have a right to this land, to the heartland, and they want to boycott the products that are coming from here. So, blessed by Israel is going directly against that narrative. They're saying yes, Israel does have a right to stand to live here in the biblical heartland. So they're taking those products and they're selling them. Um, it's not easy for the pioneers uh, living here in Judea and Samaria. So uh, not only are you making a statement that Israel has a right to the heartland of Israel, but also you're supporting the family businesses of the families of the pioneers who are uh, settling here in the heartland. Uh, go to blessedbuyisrael.com. That's blessedbuyisrael.com to... Show your support for the biblical heartland of Israel. If you use the code invest at checkout, you can get $5 off your first order. Guys, this is super important. So go to blessedbyisrael.com today. Netanyahu is, um, right now, he's unable to put together a government, uh, mostly because of disputes over who will be the next defense minister. So on Sunday, Netanyahu was handed the mandate from uh, President Isaac Herzog to form a coalition. But right now, there's sort of a deadlock. He has 64 seats. He won 64 seats in the elections, and he can form a coalition. But right now, there's a little bit of a deadlock because uh, Netanyahu doesn't want Betzalo Smotrich to be the defense minister um, because he said that due to the security situation, there is a need to act with moderation on diplomatic and security issues, at least until the end of U.S. President Joe Biden's time in office. So he's scared of what the U.S. will do. Um, the U.S. administration, they've called Ben Gavir and Smotrich, they call them radicals. And so Netanyahu was scared if he puts Smotrich into the defense minister position, that Smotrich won't, for one, act with moderation, and that the U.S. will put a lot of pressure on him and that they won't cooperate with Israel as much. Uh, Netanyahu wants the head of the Shah's party, which is another party in his coalition, Arye Derry, to take the position of defense minister, but he is not very interested in in this position. He basically said he doesn't want it. Also, his wife said he's not going to take it. Um, so as of today, Netanyahu said that basically Smotrich can pick any ministerial position except for defense or finance minister. 
So yesterday, the 25th Knesset was sworn in. Um, all 120 members were sworn in, and they made the uh, oath of allegiance. But um, the government, Netanyahu's coalition, was not sworn in, which would be the 37th government. Netanyahu was hoping to be inaugurated uh, for his coalition to be inaugurated at the same time or right after the swearing in. But because of all these talks over the different ministerial positions, he wasn't able to do that in time. Guys, make sure to check out Blessed by Israel and buy products. Go to blessedbyisrael.com and buy products from Judea and Samaria. Show your support for the biblical heartland of Israel. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Tune out the fake news and tune into what is actually happening in the land of Israel. We'll be back every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday with your direct connection to the land and people of Israel.